India's Ambassador to the United Arab Emirates. Please welcome Pawan Kapoor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Namaste, Salaam Alaikum, and now post August 2020, can I also say Bokur Tov. Uh, it's, it's a great privilege and pleasure to join you all again at the Vian Global Summit. And I commend the organizers for organizing the summit again in the UAE, albeit in a hybrid format this year. I recall addressing this third summit just exactly a year ago. And as it turned out, it was the last large event that I attended uh, before the pandemic lockdown. Um, as you heard Mr. Sudhir Chaudhary say, who could have imagined what the year 2020 had in store for us? Well, you've just heard my minister, the External Affairs Minister of India, Dr. Jay Shankar, talk about the post-pandemic world and some themes about uh, India. I will touch upon one or two aspects of that and then talk more about our bilateral relations through this pandemic and what India and UAE have been able to achieve. We've been witnessing one of the most catastrophic global events since World War II, and one of its many consequences has been that countries perceive, as you heard, national security and global trade very differently from previously. In addition to the newly added complications, more countries have become relevant to desired outcomes, highlighting the importance of multipolarity. The metrics of measuring power are now very different, not merely military and finance, but also trade, connectivity, data, technology. It is natural that disruptions caused by the pandemic have led to a greater trust, a dis distrust about the merits of globalization. At the same time, invisible challenges like climate change and the pandemic have highlighted more clearly the, the need for multilateral solutions or at least working arrangements between countries with converging interests. This in turn has brought in conversations about resilient supply chains. And this is where India has found another opportunity to play a positive role. The world needs more trusted and capable players. As a pluralistic and open society with a market economy, India fits the role well. The choice for a nation to just focus on its own recovery is an easy one. However, the choice for a nation to build up its own capabilities, including for the benefit of others, is a difficult one. I would say that India has decided to take the latter path. The pandemic raised unprecedented challenges that led to difficult decisions. For example, the decision by India to close its airspace last March for two and a half months, even for its own citizens, was a very difficult one. And I can say that the kind of problems we had trying to explain to our people here, who are present in very large numbers, it was a very difficult decision to explain to them. But this gave the government of India breathing space to control the numbers and create an impressive health infrastructure to deal with the anticipated surge in cases, which proved very helpful subsequently. However, as I said, this led to considerable challenges for Indian missions overseas, like in the UAE, where we had to answer and support the very large and diverse Indian diaspora. After weeks of responding to their urgent needs for medical and psychological counseling and providing food or temporary accommodation to hundreds of our people, we turned to the massive task of repatriation in early May 2020. You may not be surprised to learn that within a few days, three days in fact, of our opening registration for repatriation on our websites, we had 250,000 people registered. The date of May 7 remains etched in my memory as the first flight to mark the Vande Bharat mission, which you just heard the minister speak about, took off from Abu Dhabi for Kochi. And in the first three months alone, that's May, June, July, we had repatriated over 300,000 Indian nationals from the UAE to India alone. The numbers have since crossed over a million and a half, but a very large number of people who traveled to India have since also come back especially after we entered into a bilateral air bubble arrangement, which is still ongoing and supporting the strong people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries. Although it is a far cry from our normal connectivity of air services, we are operating over 300 flights a week 
between the two countries, uh, the largest of the 27 air bubble arrangements that India has in place at present. This successful effort at repatriation and continuing exchange of people would not have been possible without the strong support of the UAE government and their departments in particular of health, civil aviation, interior, and of course, their foreign ministry. In fact, the India-UAE comprehensive strategic partnership has truly emerged stronger since the start of the COVID pandemic. The constant high-level empathetic exchanges between our leadership have ensured this outcome. Our external affairs minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, and his counterpart, the UAE foreign minister, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah, met virtually in August last year for a comprehensive review of bilateral relations. Um, continuing in the virtual format, we had the high-level task force on investments, co-chaired by our Minister for Commerce and Industry, Sri Piyush Goyal, and on the UAE side, uh, His Highness Sheikh Hamid bin Zayed Al Nayan, which happened in November, which also gave an impetus to our trade and investment relations. Our Ministers of Education had again a virtual exchange in December, discussing issues of education, focusing on India's 2020 uh, new education policy, national education policy. We then had Dr. Jay Shankar visit the UAE in late November 2020, his first bilateral visit overseas since the pandemic. During the visit, he met with the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the ruler of Dubai, and of course his counterpart, the Foreign Minister of UAE. Our Minister of State, uh, Dr. Uh, Sri Murli Dharan, also came to the UAE in January 2021, and more recently we were pleased to have to receive the UAE Foreign Minister, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah, in Delhi just last month. The discussions during these visits have focused on pursuing cooperation in new areas in the post-pandemic world, in addition to ex enhancing existing areas of cooperation. India and UAE have continued to strengthen defense exchanges during this period. Our Chief of Army Staff, for the first time ever, made a visit. General Naravne visited the UAE in December. And an Indian military delegation with heads of our defense public sector undertakings attended last month's International Defense Exhibition, IDEX, NAVDEX in Abu Dhabi, which was one of the first large post-pandemic events held in person in Abu Dhabi. And a delegation from the Indian Air Force is also participating in the ongoing multinational exercise Desert Flag here in the UAE as we speak. So as you can see, the pandemic has not been a barrier to our determined efforts to strengthen our bilateral cooperation. In fact, I would like to suggest and highlight that even stronger bilateral cooperation has emerged in the areas of healthcare and food security during this period. And as you heard our minister say, these are new concepts being added on to the concept of national security. Since the onset of the pandemic, we ensured that food supplies to the UAE remained uninterrupted, despite the lockdowns in India. As a natural progression, both sides are now exploring further opportunities in this area. India was pleased to supply adequate quantities of HCQ tablets to the UAE on a priority basis, and also facilitated the arrival of many more nurses and doctors from India to support the healthcare services, service providers in this country. India was itself grateful to receive medical supplies from UAE in the initial phase of the pandemic. Indian residents in the UAE, especially doctors and frontline health workers, also provided their valuable services to UAE authorities, including through effective participation in the UAE vaccination trials. It is a great tribute to the UAE leadership that starting last December, they have rolled out a free vaccination program for all its residents, which includes more than 3 million Indians. More recently, as part of India's Vaccine Maitri or Vaccine Friendship Program, we were pleased to enable the supply of 200,000 doses of Indian manufactured Covishield vaccine to UAE in early February, and talks for ongoing cooperation on vaccines are continuing. We have always emphasized the strength of collective efforts in fighting this pandemic, and India and the UAE have shown how useful this can be in practice. Ladies and gentlemen, a resilient world in a post-COVID situation would need responsible countries to effectively manage domestic challenges as well as contribute more abroad. As you heard our external affairs minister just say, India has now supplied Made in India COVID vaccines to almost 80 nations across geographies. This is, of course, calibrated 
against the requirements of our domestic vaccination program and India's obligations under the Gavi's COVAX facility for developing countries. But India's Vaccine Maitri Initiative is largely driven by our own long-standing belief in human-centric global cooperation. While geopolitics will continue to influence the decision-making of countries, events like the COVID-19 pandemic should reinforce the importance of countries working together to better respond to such global challenges. India-UAE cooperation during the pandemic is an example of how to find opportunities in a crisis with a focus on the welfare of the people. It is the vision and quality of leadership of both countries that is responsible for such positive results. I hope that such people-centric policies that have stood the test of time would be emulated by others too in the post-pandemic world. Thank you very much.